A desire for God that cannot break the chains of sleep is a weak thing and will little good for God. The spirit of devotion is the spirit of prayer. There's no real prayer without devotion, and no devotion without prayer. It's the prayer force that makes saints. A holy life doesn't live in the closest, but it cannot live without the closet. The burden of the apostolic effort and the keynote of apostolic success is this, put the saints everywhere to the task of praying. Where are the apostolic leaders who can God's people to praying? We are a generation of non-praying saints who, like beggars, have neither the ardor, nor the beauty, nor the power of saints. We greatly need someone who can get the saints to this business of praying, and the one who can set the church to praying will be the greatest of reformers and apostles. None but praying leaders can have praying followers. Praying apostles will beget praying saints. A praying pulpit will beget praying pews. Feeble praying secures no results and brings neither glory to God nor good to men. Prayer carries the promise to its gracious fulfillment. Apostolic praying makes apostolic saints and keeps apostolic times of purity and power in the church. Absolute surrender to God is the secret of blessedness and power. Nothing blinds the spiritual vision like self or sin. When we are too busy to pray, we are too busy to have power. Prayer is the key that opens the inexhaustible storehouses of divine grace and power. Prayer has the power to hold us up in our goings and give us victory over our temptations. Prayer has the power to govern our tongues. The more time we spend in a real true prayer, the more we will grow in likeness to our Master. Genuine revivals are brought down by prayer. True prayer takes time and thought, but ultimately, it is the great time saver. Prayer is a trade to be learned and it's a life trade. The hindrances of prayer are the hindrances in a holy life. The law must yield its scepter to prayer. Prayer without enthusiasm has no heart in it. It is an empty thing, an unfit vessel. Heart, soul, and life must find a place in all real praying. Heaven must be made to feel the force of this crying unto God. Prayers must be red hot. It is the fervent prayer that is effective and profitable. Coldness of spirit hinders praying. It takes fire to make prayers go. A warm soul creates a favorable atmosphere to prayer because it is favorable to fervency. Prayer ascends to heaven by fire. Yet, fire is not fuss, heat, or noise. Heat is intensity, something that glows and burns. If our faith does not set us on fire, it is because we have frozen hearts. God dwells in a flame. The Holy Spirit descends in fire. To be absorbed in God's will and to be so in earnest about doing it that our whole being takes fire are the qualifying conditions of the man who would engage in effective prayer. We are to possess enough enthusiasm to carry us through the severe and long periods of pleading prayer. Fire makes one alert vigilant, and bring him out more than a conqueror. Fervency before God counts in the hour of prayer and finds a speedy and rich reward at his hands. While fervency is not prayer, yet it comes out of an earnest soul and is precious in the sight of God. Fervency in prayer is the former of what God will do by way of an answer. When we seek his face in prayer, God stands pledged to give us the desire of our hearts in proportion to the fervency of spirit we exhibit. Fervency of spirit is something far above poetical fancy or sentimental imagery. It is something besides preference, which contrasts likes with dislikes. Fervency is the pulse and movement of the emotional nature. The degree of enthusiasm with which we form our spiritual desires will always serve to determine the earnestness of our praying. Prayer must be clothed with fervency, strength, and power. 
It is the force that, centered on God, determines the amount of himself given out for earthly good. Men who are fervent in spirit are bent on attaining righteousness, truth, grace, and all other sublime, powerful graces that adorn the character of the authentic, unquestioned child of God. Persistent prayer is a mighty move of the soul toward God. It is a stirring of the deepest forces of the soul toward the throne of heavenly grace. It is the ability to hold on, press on, and wait. The wrestling quality in persistent prayer does not spring from physical violence or fleshly energy. It is not an impulse of energy or a mere earnestness of the soul. It is an inward force or ability planted and aroused by the Holy Spirit. Nothing distinguishes the children of God so clearly and strongly as prayer. It is the one infallible mark and test of being a Christian. Christian people are prayerful. The worldly-minded are prayerless. Christian call on God. The world ignores God and doesn't call on His name. But even the Christian has to cultivate continual prayer. It must be habitual, but it must be much more than a habit. It is duty, yet it is one that rises far above and goes beyond the ordinary implications of the term. The man who has clear views of God has scriptural conceptions of the divine character, appreciates his privilege of approach to God, and understands his inward need of all that God has for him, will be eager, outspoken, and persistent. Praying that influences God is said to be the outpouring of the fervent, effectual righteous man. It is prayer on fire. It does not have a feeble, flickering flame or a momentary flash, but shines with a vigorous, steady glow. He who doesn't push his plea doesn't pray at all. Cold prayers have no claim to heaven and no hearing in the courts above. Fire is the life of prayer, and heaven is reached by fiery persistence rising in an ascending scale. God finds faith in his praying child. He honors this faith that says in Christ by permitting its further exercise, so that it is strengthened and enriched. Then he rewards it in abundance. The superficial prayer sinks into silence when the answer is delayed. But the man of prayer hangs on and on. The Lord recognizes and honors his faith and gives him a rich, abundant answer to his faith evidencing, persistent prayer. Praying Samuels come from praying Hannah's. Praying leaders comes from praying homes. He who urges prayer on others must first thread the path of prayer himself. We must die in our closets before we can die on the cross. Preaching isn't the performance of an hour. It is the outflow of a life. Boldness was one of the marked characteristics of apostolic preachers and apostolic preaching. Saintly praying really helped apostolic preaching and rescued apostolic men from many dire circumstances. For your sermons last only an hour or two, but your life preaches all week. If Satan can make you a covetous minister, a lover of praise, of pleasure, of good eating, he has ruined your ministry. The church is looking for better methods. God is looking for better men. The Holy Spirit doesn't flow through methods, but through men. The preacher is the golden pipe through which the divine all flows. The pipe must not only be golden but open and flawless. This way the oil may have a full, unhindered, and unwasted flow. Dead men preach, dead sermons and dead sermons kill. Only crucified preaching can give life. Crucified preaching can only come from a crucified man. If you as a minister are very prayerful, you are to be pitied. The character of our praying will determine the character of our preaching. Talking to men for God is a great thing, but talking to God for men is still greater. The preachers who gain mightily results for God are the men who have prevailed in their pleadings with God before the venturing to plead with men. The preachers who are the mightiest in their closet with God 
are the mightiest in their pulpit with men. There are two evils taking place in our churches. One little praying and two no praying. God commits the keys of his kingdom to men who think that praying is their main business and devote time to it according to this high estimate of its importance. Great praying is the sign and seal of God's great leaders. Many private prayers must be short. Public prayers, as a rule, ought to be short and condensed. Prayer that produces a powerful influence is the immediate product of much time spent with God. Our short prayers are effective and efficient because long ones have preceded them. Praying makes the preacher a hard preacher. A prepared heart is much better than a prepared sermon, and a prepared heart will make a prepared sermon. He who doesn't sow with his heart in his study will never reap a harvest for God. Revelations are made in the prayer closets that are made nowhere else. The men who have done the most for God in this world have been early on their knees. Morning listlessness indicates a listless heart. 